Okay, um, let's let's begin. It's seven oh two for the record, Wednesday, February sixteenth, uh, two thousand twenty-two. Um, I want to call the order the regular meeting for the month of February for the Arlington Housing Authority. Uh, we'll do a roll call. Agar. Agar is here. Um, Fiorella. Here. Um, I just lost Joanne. Jack, did you lose Joanne too? Yeah, I just lost Joanne. Her audio, she said her audio wasn't working on the chat. So maybe she was retrying it. Okay, we'll give her a second here. Yeah. Um, Uh, let's give her till 7.05, see if she can get back on. We'll start. Uh, Fiorella, are you trying to call her? Yeah. But Jen, I got your message here about your controls and your computer. So we'll, when we get to that point, we'll figure out um, who's who. So that's no problem. Um, She's trying again. I guess she's having issues even uh, launching the Zoom meeting. She could dial on the telephone, Jack, right? That's correct. Yeah. You still on the phone with a Fiorella? Yeah, tell her to just dial on the telephone. Here we go. Yeah, it says mute. So oh, I... you're on, Joanne. You're on. You can, you can hear you, Joanne. Thank goodness. <laughs> All right. So we're doing a roll call. Uh, so, Joanne, you're here. No, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? I feel like the ad on TV. Can you hear me now? Joanne? Must be something with her speaker on the computer because the mute's off. I can't hear. Joanne, turn up the volume on your laptop. See if that's it. Hmm. You still can't hear us? Let's 
So there it is. Since we have um, you can see if we can talk around it here. Hi, Brian. Hi. Um, All right, I think we're up and running. Okay, you're on mute, Joanne, so go ahead. Take yourself off mute. Are okay. You, you can hear us now? Yes. Okay, great. All right, so we're doing roll call. So Joanne, you're present, say yes. Yes. All right, great. Um, first order of business is the executive director's report. Jack. Thank you. Um, I would first like to reiterate my condolences to the resident that passed away and their family. I would also like to again praise Chief Kelly and the Arlington Fire Department for their swift action and professionalism on January 22nd um, related to the fire at Chestnut Manor. I would also like to thank Lieutenant Burns and Lieutenant Paoni from Arlington Fire Department for conducting fire safety and prevention classes for our senior public housing development residents over the past few weeks. We look forward to working with them and other agencies in town and scheduling ongoing safety, security, and other essential trainings for all residents and staff. I would also like to update you that the Arlington Housing Authority and its partners have successfully found permanent housing for all those displaced from the fire at Chestnut Manor. Uh, this would not be possible if it wasn't for the collaborative effort between the Arlington Housing Authority, Town of Arlington's Health and Human Services, some of the Homeless Coalition, Miniman Senior Services, the Red Cross, Arlington Eats, Food Link, and others. The task force, which was made up of these partners, has been essential in assisting the displaced residents transition into their new units, as well as helping them get furniture, clothing, food, and other essentials. In addition, we are thankful to the AC Marriott in Cambridge, as well as the Hampton Inn and Suites, and Hilton Garden Inn in Waltham for working with us and the Red Cross to ensure our residents were taken care of. We are also grateful to the generous donors that have donated to the the fund that was set up by the town of Arlington for victims of the fire at Chestnut Mia. I would also like to acknowledge and praise the Arlington Housing Authority administrative staff's determination in helping residents get housed, as well as the Arlington Housing Authority maintenance staff for their speed and hard work in turning over vacant units so displaced residents could be rehoused as soon as possible. Additionally, um, I, I need to praise the Council on Aging and Town of Arlington for their assistance in helping us relocate Chestnut Manor residents to Town Hall this past week so electrical bus step testing could take place at Chestnut Manor. What should have been a negative became a positive experience for our residents who were transported by the COA to Town Hall where they were fed and entertained by Arlington Housing Authority and Council on Aging staff. The town electrical inspector has confirmed that the bus step testing was a success and has indicated that the results were good. Uh, the ADA bathroom project at Winslow Towers in Chestnut Manor is in progress. The bathroom project at Chestnut Manor was not affected by the fire at Chestnut Manor. The AC project at Winslow Towers is still in progress. We are working with the contractor to minimize disruptions to the office and community room. The fire alarm system upgrade project the housing Hauser building is out to bid. Also a presentation was held today at the Hauser building for the creative placemaking project at Drake Village. The architect was able to provide some concepts based off of a survey, off of survey results from residents. It was an informative event we look forward to moving forward in the process and continuing to seek resident feedback. Um, at New in regards to um, Edmund Manor, the Community Preservation Committee voted to provide the Arlington Housing Authority $600,000 in CPA funding towards the window project at Edmund Manor this year. There's potential that we will receive an additional $500,000 as well for a total of $1.1 million uh, for this project. Uh, the Town of Arlington has indicated that we, that the uh, that the next steps for, for the town ARPA funding will take place sometime in March. Um, I hope to have more news at the next board meeting. The window study will be starting tomorrow pending a board approval of the designer fee tonight. Um, 
In regards to a COVID-19 update, the Town of Arlington is continuing to provide free testing on Mondays at Town Hall. They've also provided the Arlington Housing Authority with some additional testing kits, which we will begin distributing to residents. Uh, there is not enough for all residents, so we will prioritize those that did not receive testing kits during the first round. Uh, the grievance procedures that were approved by the board last month have been submitted to DHCD for approval. Once approved, we will distribute copies to residents. Um, we would also like to remind residents that LTO suggestion boxes are located in the foyer of the senior public housing developments. Uh, the box in Minority Manor is located by the food pantry and laundry room. Also, in regards to the elderly annual rent redeterminations, a reminder was mailed out to residents um, this past month. Proper um, residents with, with questions related to the process should contact their property manager. We are continuing to submit share applications for residents. We have received over $40,000 in rental assistance for residents that have been approved so far. This program helps residents maintain their tenancy and address financial hardships related to COVID-19. We will continue to encourage resident participation in this program. It will be ending in April, 2022. The assistant, in regards to staff updates, uh, the assistant executive director job is currently posted and has a submission deadline of March 4th, 2022. Once we have completed our preliminary screening, we will reach out to the LTOs so that they can participate in the process. The family self-sufficiency coordinator job is also currently po posted. As mentioned at the last meeting, we have received a nearly $50,000 increase in grant funding uh, for FSS this year. Uh, this, will, this is the reason why we are able to hire a full-time FSS coordinator. And we hope to do so. Uh, we are also looking to cleaning and landscaping contracts at Winslow Towers as part of a pilot program that will help support the maintenance team. Good, hey, Jack. That's it. Great. Anybody have any questions for Jack? Okay. Hearing none, let's move on. To uh, I have one. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, John. Uh, how much did the um, fund go fund me? raise for that for the um residents the, the last i heard it was up to about forty thousand dollars and is probably exceeded it at this point wow okay i think the uh, i just read today in the book and the, the night the columbus are doing an event um for them as well um so it's nice um okay moving to number four approval of reasonable accommodation policy uh, it was in your packet i assume you took a look at it um, i looked at it i think it looks great uh, great job on that. And um, once this is approved by the board, you'll publish it. I assume we put it on the web, Jack. That's correct. Does anybody have any questions about that? <clears throat> Joanne? Um, I read that um, you're going to post it in common areas, which is fine for the senior residents, but where would that be at an autonomy manner where people could read it? Um, if there is a bulletin board outside, there's also a bulletin board by the property manager's office. Um, we'll also have it on the on the bulletin board, but what we could also do is, is send out an email once the uh, once okay. it's approved. That would be good. Thank you. Yeah, push everybody to the website. It'd be easier. Um, any other questions on that? We have a motion to approve number four. Don't be bashful. Diarella? I motion to approve uh, the reasonable accommodation policy. A second? A second. Okay, so we have a motion moved by Fiorella, second by Ga. All in favor? Ga? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Brian is a yes. I'm sorry, I mentioned Nick is going to be late. Uh, he's on a business call. Oh, that's uh, four in approval for that. Um, now, uh, number five, uh, approval of credit card policy. Um, thank you, Guy, for providing us with your bank's version. Um, it was very helpful. And um, I mean, it's pretty simple. I think if you read it, um, it's a, it reads well as a good policy. Anybody have any questions or need discussion on it? Joanne? Uh, the last time we talked about this was is that Jack would have a credit card and Chris would have one. And this is um, a change, and I was just wondering why. Well, the policy is different. Number six 
is Jack asking for permission to get a credit card for him? He has not asked yet for Chris. And I don't know why we'll let him explain that after we get to number six. So let's see if we can approve the policy. Does anybody have questions on number five, the policy? Oh, I see they're different. Yeah. yeah. I, I, will, I will move to approve the credit card policy. I second that. So we have moved by Garth, second by Fiorella. All in favor? Garth? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. And Brian is a yes, so number five is approved. Number six, so this is uh, authorization for Jack to get a credit card. Um, Jack, any reason you don't want Chris to get it just yet? Or do you mind what? No, I, I, the reasoning was is once we did, you know, develop this, this credit card policy, there's um, specific means in which um, we'd be able to allow um, other staff members to utilize that credit card. Um, so based off that, I didn't see the need for another staff member to have a credit card. Uh, both would be able to use the same through that policy. Uh, so it's you, are you doing the same credit card account with just two people that are able to use it? Well, we would we would have the credit card at the at the main office in a, in a location. Um, I would offer if you know he would request authorization to use it for certain purchases, and then I would provide it to him in those circumstances. So the only consumer that is the signature. I mean, if it's the card is in your name then technically you don't want other people using the card. I mean, if you, uh, you know, I don't have personally, I don't think we have a problem with Chris having his own card or if you have one account with multiple people with a card, I mean, okay. I mean it's, it's up to you. Uh, yeah, that, no, that sounds good. I think you could probably make that call. Um, yeah. But I mean, but to be given the card other people use, to, you know, obviously these stores don't catch it, but you know, you're not supposed to do it, but. Um, so do we uh, do we have a motion to approve number six? Oh, how many, excuse me. Yep. I, how many people are will use this card? You and Chris and other well, members. Well, I, I, the way it would work, and you know, the way I would foresee it working or want it to work would be that I would authorize the use of it uh, for those purchases, which would mean, in, in essence, I'd be utilizing it for those purchases. Like a good example was, you know, this past month for the hotel bills for the uh, uh, for the residents that were displaced. You know, we had to run around town um, dropping off checks um, to all the hotels. Um, so this, I'd be able to just utilize it for that, or utilize it for different trainings or different things. So I wouldn't. It, it, it most likely, or it really shouldn't require somebody taking it and and bringing it to a different places. It would be it would be more authorizing the credit more card. More online, well. yeah. Yeah, more online stuff. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. So do we have a motion to approve? Number six. I move to approve the credit card, the credit card for Jack. <laughs> second. Joanne, did you say second? Yes. Okay, great. Second. So we have a move by Guy, second by Joanne. All in favor? Guy? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Joanne? Yes. And Brian is yes, so number six is approved. We now move to number seven. Uh, this is the architect for the window project. Uh, too self-explanatory, gets the project off the ground. Jack, anything you want to add to it? No, um, we're excited to move forward and we're excited that Abacus Architects and Planners will be the um, design firm that will be moving forward with it. Anybody have any questions? No, just, I. Oh, I do know that Abacus has done a ton of work for us before and they're pretty good. So that's yep. just for the others that don't know that. Yep, yep, very good outfit. So do we have an approval for number seven? Fiora, do you have a question? Yeah, um, so is maintenance gonna be overseeing them going into the apartments to be able to do this study or? So from what, I, what I've been told, you know, I, I mean, we will notify residents um, properly, if, if if we if we do need to enter any units, uh, we do have a vacancy. We'll put offline at least for now, um, so that they'd be able to enter it at will. I, I think that the duplexes we don't have a duplex that's open right now, um, so we would have to just make sure that we're notifying residents properly um, if they need to enter the unit. But um, they will likely be able to do um, much of the work from the outside as well. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, do we have a motion to approve that one, number seven? I motion to approve the window replacement study contract. Great. Do we have a second? 
I'll second. Okay, we have a motion by Fiorella, second by Gar. Uh, for number seven, all in favor, Gar? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Brian's a yes. Uh, that moves on to number eight. Uh, acceptance of DHCD Compliance Reserve Award for 49.5, Winslow Towers. Uh, Jack, you want to just explain that a little bit? Yeah, so um, so in, in our continued efforts to try to offset the cost for the AC project, uh, we requested some compliance reserve funding to for the asbestos abate, abatement uh, for the AC project, and, and we were awarded uh, $49,500 um, from DHCD for that. So um, we're, we're happy and, and grateful for the state to, in, in providing us that funding that will help offset that cost. Do we have any questions? Nick has now joined us. Uh, sorry, so I'm late, guys. Is that right? Anybody? Have, Nick, we're on number eight. Thank you. Anybody have any questions further on that? If not, do we have a motion? I would uh, mo move to accept DHCD uh, Reserve Award for 49.5 for the Winslow Towers. And I second it. We have it moved by Ga, second by Joanne. All in favor, Ga? Yes. Yarella? Yes. Joanne? Yes. And now Nick? Yeah. Brian's yes. So we have unanimous on number eight. We move to number nine. Uh, acceptance of state opera bill if for hundred thousand for domestic violence initiative. This was put forth by our state rep Sean Garvey. You want to add anything to it, Jack? Yes, uh, you know, I'd like to reiterate our, our thanks to Representative Garvey uh, for advocating for us and, and helping us get this money. Um, and we're, we're excited to, to seek out the different means in which we'll be able to utilize it uh, to support um, yes. victims of domestic violence. Great, that's very good. I, I will point out, Sean was was first on the scene down at Chestnut Manor um, yeah. in support of everybody. But So do we um, have a motion to accept number nine? So moved. Second? Second. So moved by Nick, second by Fiorella. All in favor for number nine, Gar? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Win? Yes. And Nick? Yes. Uh, that moves to number 10, approval of the regular minute meetings for January 18, 2022. Do we have any corrections or adjustments to those? Is there any packet? I motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of 1-18-2022. I second. Okay, we have a motion by Fiorella, second by Joanne for number 10. Uh, all in favor, Guy? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Nick? Yes. Ryan's a yes. Next, we have number 11, approval of the special meeting minutes for February 2nd, 2022. Also in your packet. If no questions, we have a motion. So I move to, yep, so move, or Nick moves it, I second it. Okay, we have it moved by Nick, second by Gar. All in favor, Gar? Yes. Fiorella? I was absent, abstained. Great, thank you. Um, Joanne? Yes. And Nick? Yes. And Brian is a yes. Uh, number 12, LTOs. Um, I see Pam. Um, Pam Hauser? From Winslow? Yes. Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I hope everybody else is doing well. We all survived the cold weather, considering it's going to be 60 tomorrow. Bathing suits are out. Uh, <laughs> I have, um, first, I'm going to apologize for my first problem I'm having. I'm apologizing for this because I'm getting sick and tired of being yelled at by almost every tenant in the building. Shopping carts. We have two in this building for 139 people. I know some have walked off, but I keep bringing this up at the president's meeting. I get, we're looking into it, looking into it, looking into it, and I'm sick and tired of it. We need more shopping carts here. I'm tired of it. And the second thing is we need a second maintenance person at this building. There are 139 tenants with two vacant apartments. So if we even get one of each apartment, we're going to have over 140 people. Even if you get a part-timer in here to do the cleaning, it would free up our maintenance man 
to do the repairs. He gets pulled out of here constantly, and this building goes to crap. And uh, people are getting tired of it. And we so got three you, sets of contractors in here. So, Pam, have one you, for the air conditioning. Yes. Have you attended the last president's meeting? Yes, I did. And are you bringing these <laughs> to their attention? Because that's where. Yes, that's, I am. That's where these things have to be. So, do us a favor. I know, but I'm tired of being. Brian, I mean, I, I'm sorry, but I'm I'm tired of being pushed under the rug with these problems. I no, no, never no, get I, an answer. No, no, I, I agree with you. But I, I'm more concerned with the specifics. So, for instance, if the system's not working and, and you're going to the president's meetings, and, and of course, I think we've got to we got to forgive the month of February because I know our staff have been dealing with Chestnut Manor. Um, yes. In February, so I mean they're all over the map and that stuff. But but if things aren't being fixed. Um, then an email to Jack, and you can feel free to copy me as well. Uh, but I think, you know, giving Chris enough time to get his feet wet and, and get over the fire and get over putting things together, I, we shouldn't, aside from shopping carts, but uh, I think, you know, you should find things getting fixed much faster. Um, you know, unfortunately, um, we just rave, rave, wave a wand and hire new staff. I mean, we're all, we're all on the specifics of DHCD. But, um, but I'm sure Chris can figure out a way, and I know he's on the call with us. I'm sure he can figure out a way to, to accomplish some of these things that you're talking about. Well, the, the problem with the maintenance man isn't just from February. This goes before February also. We find that trash is sometimes, they pull our maintenance man out, that means 139, 130 some odd apartments do not get a maintenance man. There's nobody here. Because you pull, they're pulling them out and going to other buildings. I know this is an operational thing, but you know you're getting tired. I get keeping telling, well, we're looking into this and we're looking into that. Something has to be done. Okay, well, I cannot. Pam, I, I want to hear specifics. So do me a favor, send me an email with the specifics, and I, I'll certainly chat to Jack about it. But I mean, we just can't talk in general. Okay. Jack, do you want to say something? Yeah, and as I indicated earlier in the call, um, one of the ways in which we're addressing this is uh, we're looking for a cleaning service that we can contract. It's uh, going to be a more efficient way in which, instead of hiring a part-time mechanic. So there is a there is a plan in place um, to address exactly what you're talking about. I think of, I think hiring a, a contractor to do the cleaning would cost more money than hiring another person. No, no, no. I'll tell you, as Rich Conlon has told us, you know, hiring a, an employee, uh, you have to put aside 60% on top of the stuff for benefits. Um, it's very, very costly. The pension systems and the benefit systems in, in public. Uh, well, if, if you hire a part-timer, you wouldn't have to worry about benefits. Well, and if you hired a contractor, you don't have to worry about a lot of things. So, so it sounds but like- you're paying, you're, paying, you're paying the contractor for the benefits though. Well, but so it's going to be like, just as much money. So Pam, it sounds like you and Jack have already talked about this. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. So um, what else you got, Pam? Just the car, the carriages. I mean, that's a, I'm getting my head chewed off every how day many, about them. I know two of them walked Pam? off the property. Pam, how many, how we many have do you need? How many do we you need? We need at least four. So you need two yeah. more. You need two more. We need at least two more, if not more. Well, how many do you need? We had, well, we had five to start with. We went down to one. We're up to two again. So how many do you need, Pam? Five. Okay, cool. Jack, can we take five out of the 15 that were up at Drake Village that I saw? <laughs> oh, you need three if you have two. If they have yeah. two, you only need three, right? Right. <laughs> So, uh, and can I have GPS systems put on them? You know, well, I mean, you got to, I'm sure John's not going to want any more down there. But, um, so Jack, you can take care of that, get some more carriages. Correct. Yeah, I can, I can look into that and do that. That's an easy thing. Uh, anything else, Just Pam? to let you know, yeah, just to let you know, Mr. Wood is one person that has been complaining to me about the no carriages. Well, he's the cause of that one, that's for sure. So um, we had plenty before, but so we'll, Jack will take care of that for you. Thank you. That's it. 
All right, thank you. Um, next, Jen, Jen Hernandez. Thanks, Brian. Um, so first, um, I'll thank you guys for the receipt of the tenant association funds. Um, over the course of the past month, we um, drafted two proposed budget budgets related to the tenant funds, and um, we will get those approved at our next resident meeting. Uh, we also opened two bank accounts for the funds and deposited them. So they are in there currently. Um, next, um, so the, this past Wednesday, um, the camera installation people were out at our property and it has come to my attention that um, they were unaccompanied by maintenance staff. Well, first, um, actually, the uh, we received memos um, 48 hours, which was proper in advance. Um, and I believe they went out to at least seven buildings that I'm certain of and possibly more. Um, and the camera crews did, uh, installation crew did not go to any of those seven buildings that were notified. Um, instead, they were at a building that was, had received no notification um, and they were um, not accompanied by maintenance. In fact, um, maintenance, a maintenance man from another property was uh, down here unlocking the basement doors and then left. And the maintenance, uh, the camera people were, were in going into the units unaccompanied and um, the maintenance personnel came back and locked up the units at the end of the day. Um, and so that's, that's really unacceptable and totally not following procedure whatsoever and pretty concerning on all levels. Jack, can you comment on that one? I was not aware of that, but we'll look into it and, and address it. Okay. Go ahead, Jen, sorry. Okay. Um, okay, so lastly, um, and this is not being combative, um, there just seems to be a massive breakdown in communication um, along with disregard for tenant welfare to a degree and um, not so much consideration for tenants um, at Menominee Manor. And so that's inclusive of the board and the housing authority. Um, we would like to resolve this and it's definitely in all of our best interest to be able to resolve this and move forward so that we can all work together and accomplish as much as possible for Menominee Manor. And so, um, you know, there's a history of, on all accounts, Menominee Manor appearing even before I lived here um, from the outside looking in um, was, you know, appeared to be low on the priority list of the housing authority. Um, and I think that needs to change. And in order for that to change, we need to fix this breakdown in communication and occasionally shown the lack of disrespect, a lack of respect. And um, we need to figure out how we can move forward. What, Jen, can you be more specific? <clears throat> Uh, more specific about what thing, Brian? What are you talking about? What breakdown? Um, okay. So, um, for instance, um, the window study happening tomorrow that we, we don't know, we didn't know about it till right now. Um, the cameras that we asked about at the maintenance meeting, and then we received a memo. That was how I found out that they were coming back here. Um, the memos went to buildings that they, it wasn't, they weren't going into. Um, and you know, we're not getting any, and we're not getting a, enough answers. Mm. You know, I mean, so the, so win, the, win, the window study, they don't go in, they won't go into your apartments and, until they're ready to do that. You'll get certainly noticed for that. Okay, so, but, but I mean, no. just but knowledge, knowledge of what's going on. I mean, th all these things affect Menominee Manor and the residents. So um, I don't see that there should be a problem of us being apprised of of what's going to be happening on, our, on the property. It is of our interest. Well, uh, you know, the board okay. members didn't even know about this window project till they got their packet. So, okay, I mean, well, you asked me, you asked me for, an, for an instance, so. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, you make so, a mound out of a mole here. I mean, if there's specific things that, that uh, right, it's constant. Doing, it's, constant. It's, it's constant. I mean, it's, it's, um, being left out of the loop of things going on and finding out. So for instance, the camera people were here 
Jack and I spoke about it the day before, and he told me that they were coming to for the next phase of the project. Um, residents, a resident spoke to the camera people, and they learned quite a plethora of information that not that no one on the executive council was privy to. There was a reporter down here speaking to them, getting information as well. Um, you know, I don't think that the um, tenant association should have to find out about stuff going on down here from reporters and other tenants that mm. uh, are hearing it from third parties outside of the housing authority. I think that's that's a breakdown in communication, I would say. Um, I'm surprised that reporters are involved in this. I mean, I don't know who called those reporters, but you know, I it is. I don't either. I just I just heard that, yeah. they were on the, that there was one on the property. That's all, yeah. you know. So, but still, I mean, regardless, the tenants, tenants are finding out information from the camera company rather than the housing authority or the tenant association. Well, you know, and that's, I don't, Fiorella, I don't you want to talk, Fiorella? Did yeah. You um, so, Jen, you did mention something that is actually concerning to me, uh, which is the maintenance was just unlocking the door and then coming back to lock the door. Yeah. I was under the assumption that they were going to be staying with the people in the buildings, mostly right. there was no one home to supervise. So I guess my question would be who is making sure that there is, I mean, do we need a supervisor to supervise that the person is supposed to be supervising supervises? You know, like it did say on the notice right. that they would be supervised during right. And, and, right, exactly. And the thing is, Fiorella, is the building that was entered, there was no, they didn't receive any notification. So like, for instance, um, a resident, um, saw them coming out of her basement and she was like what do you like you know conf confronted them and said what mm. are you doing and in my basement who are you and get out of my basement close the door um so yeah no that you, that you're right that's exactly what happened they came down and let them had the basements open all day and they could go in and out if, as they needed to and nobody was with them going into the basement and jack just a quick question on this is it isn't it protocol that the maintenance staff or or, or an AHA employee would be there the whole time as they're in a building, unless the building's empty or something, what? That's what I would have imagined. So I, again, I, I wasn't aware of that situation. So I'll be looking into it and addressing it. No. Okay. Yeah, the maintenance, the maintenance staff that um, opened the doors, opened the basement doors and came back and closed them was not one from our property. But he's an Arlington housing employee. I mean, he's- Yeah, yeah, he is, but he- Yeah, yeah right. So, so he, came from another, he came from another property, unlocked the doors and left yeah. for the day and then came back. Yeah. So, we I mean, have he, so he, he should have stayed there, regardless of where his yeah, his absolutely. moment. Absolutely, I absolutely. think he should have stayed there. But we'll yeah. look into that, like you mentioned. Yeah, so. I appreciate that because there's some yeah. pretty uneasy tenants. <clears throat> yeah. What else you got? Um, well, I guess I guess that's going to be it, since um, you know we don't really see the similarity in the breakdown of communication. But maybe we can one of us can figure it out and work on it together. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, thank you. Um, Joanne, you would get your hand raised? Yeah. I, I mean, I think um, listening to this, that it is a breakdown in communication. It, uh, I think that the, from what I heard, is if the officers of the tenant association knew all of the particulars of what was going to happen and which of the units they would have uh, notified the people in the units themselves that the people would be coming. I don't know who was supposed to do this, but it, it does. I mean, I wouldn't want someone to come into my house if I was not here uh, and work on something and then leave. And I, you know, without some kind of a family member or someone being there while the work was being done. And I'm just wondering, Jack, what do you see a way that this could be resolved? Because they'll be back, right? I'm sure they have more work to do. Um, I mean, but the standard protocol is to give residents 48 hour notification, and that you know would be, and if there was a um, somebody providing work, that you know would have somebody there to accompany them. Um, as far as providing additional, you know, the details that we can provide residents in regards to certain types of situations especially something related to security can sometimes be limited. Um, and sometimes, you know, we're hopeful that they'll, they'll, they'll have a fuller scope of activity in a day and they're limited in what they can do in that given day. Um, 
but yeah, I, I, you know, we'll we'll look into what the breakdown was in this instance and, and address it accordingly. Yeah, good. Like the wrong addresses. Maybe if the tenant officers knew what the addresses would be, they could double check that the correct people knew that they were going in in advance. Yeah. So um, because the idea of someone coming into your basement and you don't know they're going to be there was probably somewhat frightening and concerning. But I don't know who was in charge of giving them out, but that would seem worth checking on. You are. With that being said, actually, I just wanted to do a, like a little reminder for all tenants that are at the meeting that if you don't want maintenance coming into your um, complex without you there, all you have to do is call maintenance and tell um, the woman that answers the phone there that you would like to be put on that list. So that's another precaution that we can take as tenants um, yeah, that's still in our power. Yeah, very good. Thank you for that one. Thank you. Um, Ellen is here representing QZAC. <clears throat> Um, so, yeah, can you let Ellen in? Yes, hi everyone. <clears throat> uh, Fiorella, just, could you just clarify there's a separate list? Because I've called, um, for example, if I'm not able to be there, and uh, but is there a general list that, or is this like specifically for each particular situation that arises? Yeah, so I had that question too, because when I first moved here, there was like a paper notice that we could have signed where it said, you know, we okay for maintenance to come in if we're not home. Recently, we wanted to change that. We wanted to be home for that kind of stuff. So I guess, I don't know if there's still paperwork for it, but I was told to just call maintenance. And when I let the woman know, know of what I wanted, she knew what I was talking about. So I'm assuming mm -hmm. that there is a list okay. that they have on. Okay. Yeah, yeah can you okay. clarify that? Is a list and is a way to add an alert in the system. So, to, okay, you know, good. Yeah. Yeah. good to know. Okay, thank you. Um, I put a note in the chat. I went by real too quickly for me in terms of number four, the uh, approval of reasonable accommodation policy. Is there something in writing that? Uh, oh yeah, very about? detailed. Yeah, it's very detailed. It's um, um, it'll be on the website any day now, so you okay. can certainly go out and read it. Sure. Okay, great. All right. Um, this is actually some follow up items. So I'm the Secretary for the Tenants Association representing QSAC and um, a few months back, there was a, a snack and you know soda machine put in in um, and uh, we had a, a large table that uh, was able to have packages that were delivered and, and also things like, you know, sales things, mailers, things like that, so that people could go to that table and get and get things. But one, um, there wasn't room for, for both the machine and that table. So we ended up having this kind of like makeshift, temporary, much smaller surface. Um, and it, it, we were told that there was going to be some other sort of table that would be made that would have um, shelves so that, um, so that, it could fit in the smaller area, but that there would be shelves so that packages could be put. I don't know where this, what the status is of that, um, but what's happening is that packages are left on the, on the floor. Um, and so I know for myself, I can't access them. It's an issue of accessibility. Um, if somebody has balance problems, you know, shouldn't be bending over, that could be a liability issue in addition to an accessibility issue. You know, if somebody falls trying to pick something up, um, you know, it could make the hallways impassable. Just it's it's created a problem. I, I think that's an easy fix. Jack, can you um, work on that? I mean, I think that's an easy fix. I know we have tables at the other buildings. So yeah, um, some, something that has like yeah. some shelf or or it could there could be some shelving on the wall near Caitlin's office. Um, but something where it's you know, there's there's going to continue to be packages <laughs> delivered. Right, right, um, absolutely. To be there, and it's just things that can't, you know, can't, it shouldn't yep. be left on on the yep. floor, and that's what's happening. The absolutely. other issue is, thank you, appreciate it. Um, the other issue is the maintenance checklist. I know um, this was something that had been brought up um, at the beginning of a few months back as well. So, just wanted to find out what the status is of that. I know you mentioned earlier about the possibility of 
a, some kind of a cleaning service, contracting, et cetera. But just wondering if there, whether it be our maintenance people or if it's contracted out to a cleaning service, is there a maintenance checklist? And if so, um, can a copy be given to each the presidents of the tennis association so they have a sense of what the, you know, proactively what's being planned in terms of maintenance for the buildings? That would be helpful. Jack? Yes, yeah, there, there is a checklist and, and that can be provided. Great. Right. Okay, Ms. thank Ellen. you. One last thing is another thing that had been discussed previously was Terminix, I believe, had been selected. Um, so I just wanted to uh, get the status update about where things are at in terms of that aspect of maintenance, in terms of trying to keep the critters at bay. <laughs> What's happening with that? Yeah. Terminex has been, um, you know, they've been providing the extermination services for all of our developments for the past. Um, since that date, um, we've established some specific days of the week that they go to each development. Um, that way, property managers and residents will be able to, um, to plan uh, better for when the and services are provided. Since, since we brought them on, have we had any more complaints about mice or anything like that? They're, they're ongoing, but they're being addressed. Yeah. Is that is that something that either through housing itself, property managers specifically, like that, that could be communicated to the residents? So, because we don't we don't really know what the plan is or what days they might be here, or if we do notice a problem, you know, um, the best way to handle that. So, is well, there a way? To all, let me just chime in. I mean, if Ellen, if people are finding mice in that building, they need to immediately call the office and report it. Mm -hmm. You know, don't talk about yourselves, call the office immediately and report it. And that's what activates Terminix coming out again. I mean, they're proactive. They come out and they put these things everywhere, the, the, the traps. But, um, you know, if we, we have somebody that still has it, and that goes for anybody in any building, they need to immediately call so we can right on top of this. Right. I think it, uh, absolutely. No, I know I would be calling right away if I see a return because I had a major problem. And um, unfortunately, I'm right near the 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 uh, garbage area. Um, so <laughs> I will you? definitely call, but I think it's reassuring just to know sort of what the plan is or how often they come. Just just for people to to know, I think it's reassuring to to know how proactive you're being with it. It's great. I'm I'm really glad to hear that. It just I think that some of the specifics would would be helpful yeah. to people. To I mean, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. It's a monthly program, right? Isn't it once a month or twice a month they go out? How did, can you just give us a general? Yeah. So, I mean, the resident will call in the request, then we'll be able to schedule it accordingly. Um, typically, in Terminex, we do an inspection first, then start the treatment process, um, and there will be follow up services as needed. And, and in terms of the, the maintenance to try to keep them away, how often is that happening? What you're describing is in response to a, a specific problem, like if, if somebody sees mice and yeah. So they, I mean, do they go out once a month to all the buildings and leave bait traps or anything like that, or what? Typically, well, there, there are bait traps that would be outside on the grounds of the developments. Yeah. Um, but in, in, in there would be treatments within the, the halls and some of the different high high impact areas. Uh, but one of the things that we're finding and we're trying to move towards as far as um, you know, helping residents and, and um, educating and, and helping them be part of the solution is um, there are some, you know, some, some, some residents or some incident instances where there are some other um, issues that, that key issues, um, root issues that need to be addressed first before the, uh, the road yeah. issue or, in, or other types of issues can be addressed properly. Yeah. So, not things, not things that we can actually go into detail on this call, sure. Uh, okay. Gwen, you had a question, Alan? Uh, I, I'm just a little confused. I thought um, this is what Jack was describing as the integrative PES policy, which is you proactive and you look for certain um, areas where problems might um, occur with PES. But I thought he said, and I just want to be corrected, that there are certain days like Maybe they go to Kusak Terrace on Tuesdays in their proactive program. 
And I think that's what Ellen was asking, if the tenants could know what days they might go to Kuzak. Is there a regular schedule or is it? That's that's correct. Yeah, so yeah. for the for resident cockroach, those types, I mean, not resident, uh, rodent and cockroach uh, treatments, those types of treatments there, um, they're gonna be happening on, on the same day every week. Same day. Every oh, that's okay. easy, yeah. Okay. So, so maybe you, you could just let the presidents know what day is their day, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, that's helpful, thank you. Um, any, we don't, uh, Pirella? Pirella? Um, yeah. yeah, so for the, for that, I remember too, that there was going to be like part of the program would be like making a plan, seeing if there's something that is continuing to happen in each place that's exactly the same that we could look at, that we could fix on our side. Um, for example, like there's a hole behind the stove at our unit. And if the if Terminex has noticed that in every apartment and that is an area that the rodents keep coming in through. And then with that, I'm just I'm okay. So I'm wondering if they have made plans of things they have noticed in each unit that we can work on as well. Because I know that the whole part of the integrative, you know trying to figure this out all together, residence terminix and maintenance uh, was part of it. So my right. question is, has, have they put a plan together of something that maintenance can work on as well to help this in the future? May I add something before you answer that, um, folks? I just wanted to say, yeah, in my place, um, in the baseboard heaters, they had to put in this. Um, so we'll, still will. Yeah, well, kind of thing. Right, right. And then after that, you know, because they, they were actually like chewing away at it, it was near, right near my bed. It was lovely. <laughs> um, anyway, but that seemed to, you know, really take care of things, even though they had come in prior and treated, the problem was still going on because that hadn't been addressed. So that's the kind of thing I think Fiorella is talking about too, like known problem areas where it's easy for them to come in if, you know, proactively, if these things can be taken care of and addressed, then that <laughs> probably you know would help a great deal thank but you I, I think um i think when we embarked in this program i don't believe and correct me if i'm wrong jack i don't believe that terminates inspected every unit or every um apartment you know i think they sure they walked around to the to the common areas and stuff but they didn't go into every point where i think this public participation is important because if somebody Ellen, you obviously know there was a hole where your heater came in, so you said something and they stuffed it with the steel wool, which does prevent them from coming in because the rodents don't like the true steel wool. But Fiorella, if there's somebody with a hole in the back of the building where you think the rodents come in, they need to call the maintenance line and report that. So it gets I actually did not know that. I did not know that. Oh, you know I, that? I, 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 I had them come in. Oh, no. Are we having a problem? No, no go ahead. Okay. Um, I thought we were getting Zoom bombed or something. Um, so I, I I had the problem and they came in, um, but it wasn't adequately addressed until I ended up having that because I found out that other people had the steel wool and then that seemed to resolve. And then when I re you know, requested it, it, that that procedure was done and it did help resolve the problem. Yeah. I hope for many, many, many years. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't realize. I found out later that that they were chewing away at the baseboard, and you know, it was like right near my bed, and uh, it was just really pretty um, disgusting. Yeah. Right, the steel wool does stop it, which is good. Yeah, Pretty yeah. Now, but uh, you know, Jack, it, it, perhaps you could send out to the board the the Terminex agreement. They could review it and see the specifics as Joanne's talking about. Um, yeah, I can I can resend. Uh, it, it was just what was sent. I, I think you sent it. Yeah, you sent it to us before, and maybe just send the the day the the days that they go to different each complex, just so people know. So. And maybe there's a way to keep track of it. Like, like there may not be any way that you know that my baseboard eaters were treated that way. You know, um, so I don't know if there's a way to, yeah. to yeah. get information yeah. from tenants. So you're not like doing everybody all over again, but you know, to get a sense of what has been done. Yep. And, 
and just 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 so I could say something, um, there will be trend. There will be a point in this process where we will start identifying trends and common issues, and and that and then that will be very helpful. Uh, Chairman, mm -hmm. I've already indicated yeah. that yeah. you know part of the process at one point will be they'll give us a presentation um, related to you know common issues, and, and you know well you know some of those issues. You know, I, I think some of that will come up as well as related to some of those common issues and units. I think even larger trend issues that will help us address things at a larger level will be yeah. very helpful and, and hopefully result in not only addressing the um, rodent and other insect issues, but also um, eventually result in cost saving. Um, so that's. Yeah. Yep. All right, so um, with the president's general public, anybody wishes to speak, you need to put it into the chat, your name, your address, and the subject matter you'd like to uh, present. Um, so if you um, if you have done that, I don't see anybody yet. Jack, do you see anybody? Marge said she has, it. sorry. Um, Mara, Oops. I see Mara. Mara, we know is from the Mana, right? Yes. Hi. How are you? Hi, Mara. Go Hi. ahead. First of nothing, good, uh, good evening, everybody. Alan, do you hear me? Yeah. Go yes. ahead. Good. Sorry, I have two questions about the. Um, I'm trying to close this thing. Uh, about the cameras in 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 Manonel's mother. The first one is where they take the power for the the camera function. Okay, and the second, why they have to go inside our units to you know connect the cameras? I don't know. I am from another country. I, I, in my country, that will be illegal. So I don't know if here is legal or no. But 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 my point is, why they do it? What they go inside our house? To put the cable and where they what they use to power out the camera. Jack, can you answer that? The electricity will not come from tenant units. It will come from um from the regular service fee that we will pay. Okay. Okay. If what they are going inside of the our houses. It's a it's a necessary part of the process identified by the um by the contractor. Uh, sorry, can you explain to me? I didn't understand what you mean. It's it's a part of, a part of the process that's required uh, for them to complete their work. Oh, that no mean nothing to me. So I just, uh, don't have logic. Can you did they explain to you why they did that? So I know it's part of the process, but why is part of the process? It's part of the installation process. They need. To feed certain things in different areas so that they can get the get the cameras in place where they need them. Yeah, and there are not any any other uh, you know they, they they tell you why inside because electricity go outside, cable go outside, everything else go outside. Why this specific go has to be inside the our houses? I assume that they they have to give you one. A logic explanation why they need to go inside their own houses. What was that? I couldn't hear. Her. You didn't hear me? How about now? Is, is there maybe, Jack, is there maybe like some more technical terms that we could get information about from the camera people? Like if there's a box specifically down there that they needed or something? I, I can provide it within reason, you know. Um, Obviously, with cameras, there's, there's concerns related to security. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's not it's not logic. You see how the, the electricity going outside from the post, cable going outside with the cable. So it has to be a logic why they need to go out in uh, houses, and that's why I mean I need to I would like to know why they have to go inside our houses. All right, why don't we work on that, Jack? Um... Perhaps tomorrow you could uh, figure out why they what they did, and obviously if it's you know, you know I know understand security and all that sort of stuff, but maybe you can get some sense of why they had to go in the basements here. Um, so we'll we'll get back to you, Mata, on that one, and everybody Thank else. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, yep. guys. Yep. Any other um, general public? Uh, 
Uh, I believe Jen says I have my hand raised. Jen Hernandez, is that you? Jack, can you put it back on? I don't. Is that an old one or a new one? It's actually Lisa. It, it, it's actually Lisa Hersey. I'm just okay. using Jen's phone. Okay, so I have two questions. You're, you're echoing. Okay, one. So in regards to the cameras, I understand you're going to get more information, but you had talked about that it's not going to come out of our electricity. But is there a, a, meter. a meter already in place on the buildings that they ran the wires? Because I didn't notice a new meter. If the electricity is going to the poles. So we, we still haven't hooked up that component of it. That'll be getting worked out in the coming days. Okay. Um, and then, okay, so now this is Lisa Hersey Tenant Association, because I was trying to get when you guys were still doing that. Um, we just want to make sure that we're clarifying when we talk about the breakdown of communication, it's not the breakdown of communication to the residents, it's the breakdown of communication to the tenant association. The and then us not being able to give any information to tenants. The fact that tenants are finding out information before the tenant association is kind of making us look like we're incompetent because we're not being told anything. And then we now have to chase the information to get further information. And that's all we were talking about. I know we're not gonna discuss this any further and that's fine. We will send an email with more points, I guess, on what we're talking about, but we just want to make sure we clarify that we're not talking about breakdown of communication with the tenants. It's breakdown of communication with the tenant association. We are different than the tenants. We, we are tenants, but we're also yeah. different than the tenants. Right, right, Ms. Deanne. I, I, I would just at least just send an email with some specifics so we can really dig into it. I mean, I think we're all on the same page here. Um, but if we can get some more specifics to dig into it, I know. And I'm fully aware of, of your uh, your association's you know uh, concerns and Jack changed some staff members down there. I think we addressed it, but but um, you know if there's other things, just send us an email so we can be more specific. With the okay, all right, all right. We, will, we will do that in yeah. the next few days. Thank you. Yeah, whatever. Great. Um, any other? I don't see any other general public. Jack, anything else you want to add? No. No. Uh, anybody have any questions or anything? So do we have a motion to adjourn? I move, I move to adjourn. <clears throat> I second. Okay, moved by next second by Fiorella. All in favor, Guy? Yes. Uh, Fiorella? Yes. Nick? Yes. And Joanne? Yes. And Brian, and let the record show that we have 13 attendees tonight. Um, seven panelists, 13 attendees. So, all right, thanks for thanks everybody. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you.